Welcome to this tutor to you sociology topic video on research methods, looking specifically at experiments. Experiments are a research method that are actually rarely used by sociologists, but due to the crossover between sociology and other social sciences such as psychology, sociologists will still refer to them in their research. The purpose of an experiment is to manipulate one factor or reason for a social behaviour and see if it causes a change in another. For example, in Rosenthal and Jacobson's study, they manipulated teachers' impressions of pupils and then measured the impacts of this. These factors that are manipulated are called variables, and in experiments, researchers try to control all other causes of that behaviour and then measure the impacts of that change and quantify or measure the effects of manipulating the variable on social behaviours. We call the variable that is manipulated the independent variable and the variable that is measured the dependent variable. There are two main types of experiments that we come across in sociological research, lab experiments or controlled experiments and field experiments. Lab experiments take place in a controlled environment, not necessarily a laboratory. The rationale for this is that researchers are able to control all of the other variables, what are called extraneous variables, in the setting to demonstrate that any change in the dependent variable has been caused by manipulating the independent variable. If it has, then this can establish a cause and effect or causal relationship between the two variables, and this is an important feature of scientific research. The alternative method is a field experiment, which takes place in the research subject's natural environment. This means there is less control over extraneous variables, but it does have higher ecological validity because it is in a natural setting. Researchers will still look to manipulate the independent variable and measure the dependent one. However, this is more likely to cause a correlation between the two variables than a causal relationship. This is because the researcher cannot be certain that other variables have not influenced the behavior of the subject. Experiments are useful in the social sciences for a number of reasons. Firstly, they are highly scientific and establish causal relationships and correlations which can be used to formulate theories about human behaviour. They are high in reliability as they can be repeated and the results tested which allow scientists to either prove or disprove theoretical ideas. And the use of quantitative data that is preferred by positivist sociologists allows for objective judgments to be made. However, critics would suggest that even quantitative data can be interpreted subjectively. Despite the advantages used in experiments, there are practical, ethical and theoretical issues for researchers to consider. Practical issues include the cost of materials and lab hire, which makes research using experiments more costly than other methods such as questionnaires. It also means they tend to be smaller in scale, which creates problems when trying to obtain a representative sample. Lab experiments often rely on volunteers to take part in their research and pay people for their participation. There are numerous examples of experimental research where the volunteers were social science students who may have had an ulterior motive in taking part in the research. Field experiments are based on opportunity sampling, which whilst theoretically can be representative, often relies upon those being present in a certain place and time and may not fit the diverse range of people in wider society. A further practical issue, particularly with field experiments, is controlling extraneous variables. People react to situations based upon past experiences and interactions with others, and it's difficult to control these variables if we know very little about those being studied. A final practical issue is the mundane realism of activities that lab experiments ask people to complete. There are very few real-world consequences for choices and decisions in a lab experiment, and so people may not react the way they would if they were faced with the problem in real life. There are ethical issues with both lab and field experiments. Often it is required to deceive participants in both of these types of experiments in order to obtain a true reflection of an individual's behavior. A famous example of this is Milgram's research into obedience, where participants were deceived into thinking that the research was about learning. However, had they known the research was about obedience, it is less likely that the results of the research would be valid. A further consideration is consent. Field experiments often lack any form of consent because if the person knew they were taking part in research, they may alter their behaviours. This can be addressed through gaining presumptive consent from an ethics committee. Finally, protection from harm is another consideration. 
While some experiments such as Zimbardo's Stanford Prison Study and Milgram's Obedience have gained notoriety because of the psychological harm they placed their participants under, contemporary research looks to limit the harm to participants. However, it is possible that experiments may still cause people psychological harm if they do something against their own moral code during the research. Of course, a debrief and support can be offered for those affected, but it remains an ethical issue that researchers must address. Finally, we have theoretical issues. Experiments can lack validity for a number of reasons. The behaviour shown in a lab may not reflect behaviour in real life. The presence of researchers may cause the Hawthorne effect, where the subject changes their behaviour because they are aware that they are being observed. Furthermore, experiments may not provide the depth of understanding into people's motivations behind acts. Whilst it will give research an idea of how people will act, it doesn't explain why they behaved in that way. However, the purpose of experiments is to produce quantitative data on subjects, and so perhaps further research into the reasons why may be required. A final theoretical issue is that of objectivity. Whilst on the surface the scientific nature of experiments can be seen to be objective, there is a subjective decision by researchers as to which variables will be manipulated, and therefore the process of the experiments cannot be seen to be truly objective. In trying to prove a theory, researchers will have an inherent bias in their actions. Just a few examples of research that has involved experiments, most of which have come from social psychology. Milgram's obedience remains one of the seminal studies for those in the social sciences. Uh, for those doing the media module, you could also mention Bandura's Bobo doll experiments. Whilst in education, the most notable field experiment was conducted by Rosenthal and Jacobson, examining the impact of teacher expectations on student performances. That concludes this Tutor to You Sociology topic video on research methods looking at experiments. Thanks for watching.